All right, we're going to do part two now of my interview with Laura Osnes and Nathan Johnson. They're going to tell us what life is like after cancellation. Remember, Laura was canceled on Broadway simply for not taking the vaccine. It's an insane story. But what does life look like after cancellation? And what role does her Christian faith and Nathan's Christian faith play in that? I think you're going to be encouraged. Stick around. Here we go. Part two. I lived among the woke, rising to the top of the advertising world until they cast me out because I wouldn't bow down to the woke mob. That led me to the Daily Wire, where I got a close-up look at the conservative side. And the one thing that I've learned is politics are not the answer. Only Jesus is. Welcome to The Big Picture. Don't forget to subscribe to The Big Picture with Brett Craig. I'll be right back. I think I know the answer to this, but I still want to ask. Sure. What is it like? Because again, I'm just trying to help people understand the cancellation thing. It, yeah. What's the, the feeling of reading lies about yourself in the press? I mean, I know Inquirer does it to every celebrity in Hollywood, but it, it's, yeah. canceling is especially bad because it's, it's, it's trying to deperson you. It's trying to take Absolutely. you out of your career and pretty much just, do you just go off and die somewhere right. alone? That, right. that is what it does. So what's it like to read those things? I think... Um, and maybe you can speak to this even more so, sure. but I think like I've worked, my reputation is very important to me mm -hmm. and I worked very hard to establish yeah. a good reputation, I guess, and just love on the people in my community and to see it all turn so quickly over this one thing mm -hmm. was very hurtful. Yeah. Yeah. That was one of the things we took, uh, we took special pride in and you did is, um, we would talk about like it, when you would do a show. It's so like, you know, we'd intentionally like think about each cast member and how we, you know, where they're at and how can we can be friends with them, how can we can support them. We have, uh, you know, you know, invite people out to, you know, dinner or have it over at our house. And to us, it was just, we were very intentional about that. So your character, Wanting to be at least. you know, and yeah. so, so to me that when your character came under fire, that was wild. And, um, and, and cause it just is. It just and is not who you are at all. The article, too, is like it mentioned that, like, I'm a Christian and like as if that had Anything something to do with yeah. the vaccination thing. Again, it's like if you believe this, then you're this, this, this and you're an enemy. And like I, I just there was just so much negativity. And that's just not who I am. I just feel like I, I had a reputation of being kind. I played Cinderella on Broadway and like I, I, I took that responsibility mm -hmm. very seriously and I, I want to be a light wherever I go and to, to see this whole thing get so twisted mm -hmm. and attacked and misrepresent who I am and the reputation I felt like yeah. I had built yeah. overnight, literally overnight just pulled, rug pulled out. Yeah. None of that mattered anymore because of this one thing. Right. Uh, that, that negativity, by the way, yeah. that you hit, hit you, it has a physical presence to For it. For sure. Mm -hmm. it? It's like a boot on your chest. Yeah, yeah you can right. feel it. It is. You can it, feel it. And that's why, again, I, I keep bringing up Jennifer. She's awesome, and she was here this morning, but yeah. our conversation is so fresh. And one of the things we just were talking about, where is this, what is this wokeness thing? Mm -hmm. What is it? And, I'm, and I was just saying to her that as, Christ, as a Christian, and I don't know if you perceive this as well or you think this, is that I think wokeness is a, it's a spiritual thing that's happening under We you. listen to your podcast about it. And I, I don't <laughs> yes. know how to get away from that because yeah. everywhere all at once. Yeah. Why, why are all the humans going bananas? There's explanations. It could be Trump. It could be a, a pandemic. But at the end of the day, everywhere all at once, everyone lost their minds mm -hmm. and started being so inhumane to each other. Yeah. Out. And I know that's what fear does to people, so I, I get sort of a yeah. scientific explanation of some kind, but I can't discount the spiritual. And, I, and I, part of it is just that weight on your chest. Yeah. Yes. When, you're, when that cancel mob comes at you, it is one of the most, people can't even right. understand. The, yeah. No. Yeah, there was plenty of times that's you were the on thing. the floor. You know what I mean? It's oh, just yeah. like, yeah, it's, and it feels, you're right, it feels like a boot. Um, and I think that, I, but I think f there is something also spiritual with fear. You know what I mean? Like, uh -huh. I think that that is, there is a, that thing is an, is an oppressive thing that, uh, that it, it does make you, it does cause you to, it influences your decisions, right? Like that's just. Operating out of a place of yeah, fear. Yeah, out of a place yes. of fear and out of a spirit of fear if you want to go there. You know what I mean? It's like, that stuff is not, that doesn't lead you to healthy decisions. You're mm -hmm. not your best self when you when you uh, succumb or you submit to fear. Like who can make good decisions out of that? Now there's a healthy amount of, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I, but, 
But, um, but I think when you have a diet of fear, which is what we basically had for the last couple of years, yes. it's just like, oh man, that death ticker, that, what does that do? It makes you, gives you anxiety. Remember that, you know, the COVID death ticker? It's like, you know, how, how can you make healthy decisions if that's what you're consuming day in and day out? And so um, I, I do think that the process, that the cancellation is a, is a really weird thing. And I think, I, I will say that it, I, w- one of the things that we've really tried to do is just kind of be an example of like, hey, like there's life after cancellation too, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Yeah. And also to dissect the process of going, because really we only want to go through this once, right? <laughs> it's I've like, done it twice. You know, and, and I'm, I don't uh, recommend it. But you know, Brett. at least you, but, but, but you only have the first time, you know, That's once, right. you know, and I think that, and learning how to navigate it and learning like what's the steps, like what are even the, you know, that process of going through grief, of losing yes. a career yeah. for you and, and, and just kind of like walking through, what does that look like? What does this feel like? What is that anger? Yeah. What is that Allowing resentment? Allowing yourself What's the bitterness? to feel all those things. Oh, but that helps me get to forgiveness or something like that, so yeah. which is a better emotion, right? And yeah. I was just no. gonna say, I think there's a health, there was something healthy and um, ex- ex- of expansion in me that I had put so much of my identity in that in what I did, yeah. and that's who people, that's how people saw value in me, that's how I saw value in myself, and when that was taken away, there really was an identity crisis of who am I, mm-hmm. what am I even good for, and what else am I good at? Nothing, that's it, that's been my life. And so I was forced to, there were many nights on the floor trying to figure that out, and just like weeping, going like, that's all I know. And now in this, it's been a year and a half now, I'm a year and a half removed, and we've been challenged to find our identity and what really matters and ground ourselves in who we are without that, without what we do. Mm -hmm. And so much of that brokenness has turned into art that is being made in new ways. I'm now not waiting for someone to give me a job within that system. It has inspired us to see the world and to see creativity and to see people in a whole new way when this is all I ever really saw and knew before. And so I feel like I'm in an, a season of expansion and growth and that's painful, that's hard. Super and it's painful. scary to be vulnerable. Yeah. And this is what was safe. But when I can't do this anymore, I'm Holy beginning Lord. to now see all of this and it's actually, it's we're growing. <laughs> well, it's interesting because you're Christians. I'm a Christian and, yeah. and, and as Christians, we're told this when we're in church, we're told this when we read the Bible. Jesus is like, you're going to have to become like me. You're gonna diminish. I'm going to increase. increase yeah. um, you're going to be conformed to my image. Mm. And I actually just did a, a monologue on it that cancellation is like a shedding of the ties to the world. He For said, sure. you're going to have to cut yeah, that world yeah. off. For like, sure. Yeah. You can't have both. You can't right. serve both masters. And I think in America, as Christians, and I don't know if you guys agree with this, we were serving two masters, yeah. whether we yes. knew it or not. Yeah. The system pulls us in. Yeah. Broadway starts to call us. The top of the ad industry calls me. Mm-hmm. Money gets its hooks in us. And all of a sudden, we don't realize it, but Jesus wasn't playing around when he said, you can't serve two masters. Right, yeah. So you go through this, and you're having your identity stripped, and it's like, kind of what I said in my monologue is that, in a, in a way, I see it now as a gift. Yeah. That, yes. That basically, he was just saying, I'm just going to cut those for you. That's you know, it. Like, because you can't. <laughs> totally. Absolutely. That's it. It I, is a gift. You're right. I yeah. Mean. I've often said that I'm like, I, I think it would have taken something this drastic for me to ever leave or consider something else. And I'm just beginning to be like, God has so much more. Mm-hmm. And I think we were going to be lifers and be there. And I'm suddenly like, he is now helping me find my voice, mm-hmm. figuratively and literally and mm-hmm. spiritually, yeah. emotionally, that I, I maybe would have only begun to explore had I not been forced into it. Yeah. And there is a freedom. I think that, that yes. there is definitely a freedom that comes with, with um, cutting off Cutting, cutting those cords. And I was working. Attach you to the, You're enslaved by them. Oh, absolutely. And I then was, you think about it, what he said, I came to set you free. Right. Like <sighs> you think you're in freedom, you're actually enslaved to a system and right. you don't see it. Right. Yes, yep. and especially in the entertainment industry, it's applause, it's pleasing people, it's doing things to climb the ladder and relationships and being perceived a certain way. And I now, I'm like, I no longer have put so much value on what people think. I now no longer care what well, you and, think. <laughs> and, the, and, the, and the power of, of cancel culture comes from the value of what people, we esteem what people think of us. Perhaps we esteem it more than anything. 
And not for nothing, because it's tied to whether we'll get make money. It's tied to whether we'll have a career. Right. But this, we're warned against that. Again, as Christians, yes. don't be a man pleaser. Right. Yes. Because that's what we are. I mean, like yeah. we all are. We want the approval of our parents when we're kids, and we want the approval of our friends. I want approval when I walk off this interview and be told it was good. Yeah. Right. We want to hear that people affirm yes. that we're doing right. everything right. Yeah. And and this is it. the this is the power of cancel culture that. Yeah. We'll do almost anything for the esteem of people. Yeah, right. It's interesting though because we've talked about this a lot for for this year. One of the one of the words that we want to we've chosen to that, to live by for this year is is authenticity and authentic yes. and living authentically. Mm-hmm. And um, and to me, it's like you know I think back to my life in New York and and it was it was a wonderful time. Like we're you know we're thankful for what mm-hmm. it was. But I just you find yourself you know, kind of anything that would be like, you know, a little bit, uh, you know, cause people to feel uncomfortable. You're self-censoring. You self-censor, or like, you know, just kind of shave those edges off just a little bit. Even if they're, those, but those things are me and they're my belief systems. And I have to say, like, I think there's a part of us this year that's like, you know what, I just want to, if I think something, I, I want to be able to say it. I want to be able to have a conversation with somebody. <laughs> I, love it. I don't, if, I, if I'm, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. this is what makes me me. Yeah. And I want to live authentically this year, and yeah. we both do. And we just, you know, I think that that is a, that's a really, uh, I think that's a healthy place to be, you know, so. That is really good. And Nathan, I, I, well, yeah, no. no I was just going to say, I think yeah. the only way culture is going to shift and we're going to get away from this cancel culture thing is if more people begin to do that. Yeah. And don't succumb to compliance or silence or self-censoring, yep. mm-hmm. but have the courage to be able to speak and have a conversation and be proud to be authentic. Yeah, that's right. And be proud ask to have questions. a voice and have an opinion yeah. or ask questions or... Well, you, you think of it, a lot of this movement, wokeness and especially, it's all about identity. Yeah. Identity, identity. It's ever narrower fractions of identity that we get into, yet it's the most conformist thing you can imagine. Yeah. It seems to squash any identity that you might have, right. any individuality that you might have. It's just a very Isn't that wild? Yes. It is. Yeah. It's just weird. Yeah. So you, I want to focus on you just for a second because, right. again, just exploring this issue of cancellation and what it, because I think so many people it, it hasn't happened to or may, maybe it did a little bit with the vaccine, but being the significant other, mm-hmm. <laughs> what is that like yeah. to watch somebody that you know their character, yeah. you know who she is, what was it like to go through? Yeah, it's infuriating, you know, I mm-hmm. think. Um, but early on, we, you know, I want to be a, I've always wanted to be a supportive husband, right? You are. And a supportive <laughs> partner. You but I, I, you know, immediately, like, this is not something, like, we do everything together. We make decisions together, right? I'm, we're Teams. better, we're better together. Yeah. So we said, let's, let's attack this together. Sorry, they're not canceling you. I'm, I'm, I'm jumping right in there with you. And we're, yeah, we're doing this so together. Sorry. And it, but it was, but it was, it was valuable for us to do, to kind of have that, um, to kind of be able to take some blows as well. And um, but it was, it was hard. It was a really difficult thing. And I think, you know, you are a very strong person. And I think you found that you. I'm also a very sensitive. A person. very sensitive person. <laughs> and I'll admit it. I'm not ashamed of it. I am. So it was hard. It was hard for but me. I was you like, are so sensitive. Grateful. But I do think that there was strength there. I was very proud of you because. There was strength there that I don't think you knew that you had. Yeah. And so to kind of like encourage her and challenge her and, and say, no, 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 you are strong. Yes, I know you feel weak. You feel yeah. like this is just crushing your whole world. You can do this. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I think I, I, you know, I had the pom-poms. You know? yes. I was like, you can do this. Keep going. Keep oh. going. And, and I got you. You know, and so I think that's, I think it's really important to, I mean, because, you know, with cancellation, I mean, you know, it's like it affects your whole family. It doesn't just affect oh, yeah. you, and I think there you're you know you're the tip of the spear in that way, or you're the you're the yeah. you're the one that gets the brunt of it, but it affects everybody. You know, yeah. we had to you know move together and and kind of take on this stuff together. I was feeling the you know some of the hate uh, mail that she was receiving, oh, yeah. and it's just like <laughs> so. I think it's important to have. Um, I think if somebody goes through that, I think people around you, it's 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 really key to have solid people around you that are going to take care of you. Right, because you have thousands of people telling you you're somebody you aren't right and the pressure of that people don't understand it's like the ultimate psyop it's like you're reading the wrong things about yourself you're hearing the wrong things and it it almost can get you to the point where you almost start to get Stockholm syndrome right or sort of believing have I done something wrong here right oh yeah yeah there's moments like that and and like real depression and real anxiety 
like, yeah. you know, set in for a long time. For a long time. But those yeah. core people, you, you want. And our families are awesome, too. And we've had some, oh, yes, thank we've had some great relationships around us that, yeah. and some of them are, are brand new. And they just, man, they were, they really came. They to, showed up came, came when it mattered. Yeah, when absolutely. all the people I thought would show up who didn't and other yeah. people came in and showed up. Yeah, it was incredible. So cool. a piece of this is you got to surround yourself with like super grounded people to I weather so. this. Yeah. Because it's basically a malice struggle session yeah. Yeah. that is like an old communist technique. I'm, I'm not kidding you. Like yeah. to just completely shame you into right. submission. Yeah. And, in, and, and again, it's a spiritual feeling, a spiritual vibe that's going on. And if you don't have that grounding, mm -hmm. you're dead. I mean, you said something to me that really stood out to me the other day, which was that... Um, you just decided to get canceled with her. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah absolutely. I mean, you know, yeah, I mean, to me, it's like, let's do this together. Let's get canceled. <laughs> I mean, honestly, I'm like, Which, that's, that's, more, that's more on, his man. attitude, and I needed a little bit of that because, yeah. honestly, that like your courage and your fortitude has inspired me, and getting to do it together. Hence, even him sitting next to me today, just being a, a support system through it all, has just been. I've been so, so very grateful. And you have a unique perspective on it that I don't have because it was yeah. my career, my whatever, yeah. my face, my name yeah. that was attached to it. But it did affect both of us greatly. Mm -hmm. And you have been just so awesome in picking me up off the floor and going, nope, we're restarting and we're moving forward right. and we're doing this. And I think that there have been, I think there's been great examples of people that have kind of weathered this cancellation. So that's one of the things when we heard your story too. Yeah. I was like, oh, I, I, yeah, yeah, totally. It's nothing compared to you. Yeah, crying over our, our breakfast sandwiches. But, you know, I think that, that we, are, we, we respond really well to courage. And when people don't back down and when people, like, face this thing head on, man, it, it does something in us. You know, there was, there was a few people that I think um, uh, Gina Carano was one that we saw her Allison story. Williams. And we, and Allison Williams. The way that she spoke so clearly um, when, you know, the stuff with ESPN and Disney. Kind of, you know, I think that for us... That gave us courage, and, and so we said, you know what, this is something we can be an example to other yeah. people, and if we can do that for a few people that maybe have this coming in their future, because like you said, yeah. it's coming for you, and, and you know, cancellation's gonna come for everybody at some yeah. point, and so, and I think that people have a fear about that, because it's yeah. like, everybody's trying to, you know, that online stuff, man, they, you can pull something up from 10 years ago. Yeah. And uh, that stuff's not going away. So or I think say one little thing, like in your situation, completely not meant to offend yeah. anybody, and someone takes it and it. Yeah. runs with it. Yeah. So I think it's, you know, I think that it's really important that you see that people see someone carry in the, you know, the light and saying, hey, this is this is the way to go. Yeah. And it's going to be hard for a season, but there is life beyond it. Yep. And there's totally. a whole crew of people now. We're we're part of the canceled club. I like know, it's now you're bigger. like, hey, yeah. It's getting bigger all Absolutely. the time. Yeah. The water's fine. <laughs> so we talk a lot about, <laughs> as Christians, I mean, we, this, this verse in James, consider it joy when you encounter right. trials. And you're like, James, what are you talking about? The yeah, half that brother of Jesus. Yeah, I hate that verse. <laughs> you're James. right. Half brother of Jesus says this. I actually think that's one of the most beautiful books no. in the Bible. It's just so full of wisdom. But consider it joy yeah. when, you when you encounter trials yeah. because they're going to perfect you. Yeah. yeah. It, that's just an amazing, and I, I bet those words from James start to resonate now because sure. yes. I look at you two and like, you're closer after this. Would you? Oh, Absolutely. for sure. A hundred percent. Yep. This has been a trial and the marriage is stronger. Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. No, you, you go through something like that. You kind of, you get to know somebody else. You realize, oh man, that's my person. You know yeah. what I mean? So it's good. There's a lot and of And we've grown as people, as you said, like a strength I didn't know I, I had, a fortitude in the face of adversity that I've been forced to have to face. And do you have a backbone or are you going to let it overcome you for the rest of your well, life? And that's another thing is like Christians, a lot of times, oh, they're meek and mild. Jesus meek and mild with his sandals and <laughs> his tunic. And oh, it's right. Like, no, he's a lion. Yeah. And, and this moment yeah. has shown who the lions in the culture are. Like, yeah. and, and I don't mean that in an arrogant way, no. but who are the lions, the no. people that that's the visual that comes to me, that big male, it yeah. could be female too, but just that big lion face yeah. of just like, I'm not moving. Yeah. And it's not about being mean. It's not about being full of hate. There's convictions. Right. I'm yeah. not going to yep. let those right. go. That's right. And to find out, it, 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 this, it's been a litmus test. Yeah. But it's kind of, as Christians, again, we're actually called. I mean, Jesus was the lamb, but he was also the lion. And we don't yes. talk about the lion much. It's okay. like the lion is... You know, he's, he's, he's a bad dude. Like, you know what I mean? Like, he's yeah. also a powerful 
person that when you look at him, when we yep. see people encounter him in the Bible, they can't look at him. Right. They fall down. Right. It's like, right. that's who you're dealing with. Right. And as Christians, again, we, we, we need to be humble. We, we don't want to take on uh, a chest beating kind of. of but it, it is interesting in this time that, mm -hmm. that many Christians, and not all, not all of them Christians, but a lot of people were able to find that. Yeah. I, I th and I think that that thing rose up in us, that when we see, saw it, it was actually less for us and more when we saw mandates, when we saw, you know, people getting fired, when we saw, yep. you know, servicemen and women, when yep. we saw, you know, I, my, my brother got let go of his job. Yep. Yep. I mean, I, it, and then you see that affect your nephews, you see it affect your, your families, you see it affect people that you love, like that thing rises up and it's like, oh, like we just get motivated to speak out even more about stuff. And, and people have been affected by the vaccine too. Yeah, that's actually a whole nother thing, a group of people that have reached out to us. It's people that have been hurt by it and feeling, they're feeling gaslit and that's heartbreaking. And so I think when we do have that, it's like, no, we gotta, we've got to move forward with strength and grace. It's that tension between the two, two. And, and forgiveness for people and off, always offering um, that way grace back. for them. Yeah, yes. but I think that there is something that says, you know what, enough is enough. And, <laughs> And, um, and I, so that strength is, you know, something that we've tried to latch on to. I was going to say, I had two friends prophesy me, not to prophesy over me in this season, and not to get all churchy either, yeah. but like no, saying, get churchy. I like, saying like, <laughs> like I, God was going to help me find my roar in this season. Wow. And that really resonated with me because I'm not, I, I'm, you're, I'm lions, meek, I'm mild, I'm a, yeah. right, exactly. Like I'm a peacemaker, like I'm, you know, like that's, that was my personality. And I'm like, I'm not a roar. I'm not, I don't like conflict. I hate it. And <laughs> I do feel like yeah. God's helping me find that roar. And I think I did it through songwriting and music. And that's been a vehicle that I've been able to do that. But I think in what you were talking about, in I see the culture beginning to shift in one direction. And I'm going, well, then some people need to stand up on the other side to even mm -hmm. keep it even, to right. keep it in the middle. Right. I'm fine, again, being around people that... Um, whole different values, but I think our attitude has to be one of love. It's not roaring out of vengeance or no. justice or hatred or anger or mm -hmm. fear. It's roaring in love mm -hmm. that I think is going to change the culture mm -hmm. for the better. Yeah, no, I agree. Yeah. And make an impact. Because that's the, our, we have a funny definition of love today. Love means in the culture, affirm everything. Right. And actually love is speaking truth. the truth in love. <laughs> there right? we go. Truth like I, love. I owe you the truth because I love you. Right. Because you're going over a cliff. I need to say to the culture what it right. needs to be said because I believe we're going over a cliff. Yeah. That's love. It's not a love to affirm everything that everyone says. Yeah. That's true. No, that's that's so true. That's that's it. That's exactly it. Yeah, and I, so releasing that roar or that that voice inside of you. Yeah, that's that's what this has been able to do for you. So you you made an album, the other side. I, on the, on other the other side. side. I love that title because yeah, there is another side to this. Yep. We went I, through a valley. We're coming out on the other side. <laughs> I want to put up. Can we put up that album art uh, for on the uh, other side? Do we have that? And if we don't, that's all right. I will try to play it right here if I can. I think I have it all keyed up. I want to just play this real quick. Just a little bit from oh, one of your songs. Oh, yeah. yeah, there it is. It's a beautiful album cover. It looks great. Thank you. Yes, we um, shot that. Did you? It looks hey. great. I love it. I love the type. Let me just fix my necklace here. Too. Everything looks great. Um, all right, I'm going to play a little bit from the album. Oh, my gosh. I, this is, was cool. Laura's response to this was to start to put these feelings down into songs. So there's a little piece of it. Tell me what I ever do. I was loyal, thinking you'd be too. To go and turn your back on me. Break it off so easily. And maybe I will come back, come round to it. Ready to forgive, but not today. Okay, cause when I'm ready to move on, I'll move, and I'll get over you. 
I know, I, I promise we'll exit this zone <laughs> soon. But I, I wanted to play that because I think that's the other thing is like, you know, and I may kind of relate it to Christianity again, is that sometimes we can think, oh, as Christians, everything is working together for our good. C consider a joy when you encounter tri trials, but right. <laughs> going through them is not fun. And like, yeah. I, I, obviously, that's what you're writing about there. But, but what, is, what is that you're writing about there? Because is it, is it New York? Is it all of it? Is it? Yeah. So the... The song, actually, I'll just get specific about this uh, particular writing session. I wrote this with two other um, amazing writers, um, Aubrey Toon and Jay right. Denton. And I went into the session, and the song that we wrote was called Grateful. And the verse was the same, but the chorus was different. And it was all about choosing to be grateful, even though, even through a hurtful season. And then I walked away from the session going, that's not really how I feel. Someday maybe I'll feel that way, but I'm still in, yeah, I was still in the totally. bitter phase. I was still in the hurt, heartbroken phase. And we reconvened and um, rewrote this chorus. And I said, that feels really more, a lot more truthful, truthful for where I'm mm -hmm. at right now. Yeah. And I just found that even though I wanted to write positive yeah. music and that's the message that I wanna share and put out into the world, what's most important is writing from a truthful place. Yeah. And that is the type of music that hopefully is going to affect people or reach someone who's going through something similar. Yeah. And I hope that that is that that's what comes across in in what I was writing. Yeah, because I think it's important too. Like, yeah, I think because I think there is this view of Christianity, which is like you're just running through a field of flowers <laughs> and all the time. Sunshine you're and happy. rainbows. Yeah, yeah, yeah life's yeah, yeah. easy, and it's like, well, actually, it's Jesus only. said, in this world, you're going to have trouble. Uh -huh. yeah. Actually, if they hated me, they're going to hate right. you. Uh -huh. And we just don't talk about those verses. Right. They're not on our walls. Um, and in fact, those are like kind of the meat of it. Like right. it, it, there is all this joy on the other side, but Jesus would stop people that wanted to follow him and they would right. stop and go, you just have to sell everything you, you own. Right. That, and the right. person would be like, oh, yeah. Oh, okay, well, I'm not in it now. Totally. Like yes. you're going to have to give it up a lot. Yes. Yeah. And, and we don't talk about it, but I, I love that you wrote about that in the song because I think you're, the honesty, there's still pain in that. For sure. Like, it's not like Jesus, when he walked through this world and lived his life, didn't have pain. He was a man acquainted with sorrow. Right. right. That's how he's described in Isaiah. And so it's just, it's just, I think it's just important to know and that, like, being real. That's, yeah. a, that's yes, important. It, exactly. Being real. And I even say in there, I'm like, someday maybe I'll come back to it and I'll be ready to forgive. But this day, I'm not quite there yet. And yeah. just admitting that that's humanity yep. and it's okay to be hurt and it's okay to acknowledge that season and as Nate said earlier going through those stages of grief oh, yeah. <laughs> and you have and to anger recognize, and what, and recognize yep. where it. you're at be honest with where you're at so that you can get to the next yeah. thing and again some of the most hurtful painful human experiences have created some of the most beautiful art you know Adele has a whole album about her breakup like <laughs> yeah. Casey Musgraves and her divorce like if I'm right am I being accurate on that no, I think that's like right. you know what I mean like some of those hardest yeah. things you, that's the way to cope is to put it in a song. And I have found that to be a very, a very healing, cathartic thing that also, again, hopefully touches other people. The show's called The Big Picture. One of my monologues when I talk about my double cancellation. I, the mm -hmm. second one wasn't as bad, but the, the first one, eh, maybe it was as bad because people <laughs> actually came out and, and uh, publicly or digitally stoned me online. Yeah. Great. But I, I just said, I don't even know where that name came from. It just kind of came to me one day talking with Michael, the... Uh, the head of the studio here, and, and um, we just knew it was right. And I, and I didn't realize all the meaning in that. And I think one of the meanings that is really clear to me and it was in my monologue is that God sees the big picture, mm -hmm. and, and we just don't. Right. Like, that's why this word faith comes up in the Bible so much, like faith, 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 faith. You can't even please me without faith. Right, isn't that wild? Yeah. So that's because I don't show you this. Yeah. I see this. Yeah. You're going to see this much at <laughs> yes. the time. Yeah. So... You've been, you've been in that year. You're right here seeing yes. about that much at a time. Of what he's let you see and where you're at so far, I guess I would just love to know, like, you don't know the big picture, but what do you feel God has been teaching you? And you maybe have touched on it before, mm -hmm. but if there's anything else, both of you, like, mm -hmm. what, have you what do you think God has been saying to you through this? Yeah, I think one of, it, one of the things is, uh, I think in this season, he's, it, there's, there's many, many times of just, being inspired to do some some new work I think for us it's like I the last season was was great but 
I think we never, we would never have seen where we're heading right now. And, mm -mm. and for us, it's like we have this, almost this responsibility to take care of the people around us, um, similar people that have gone through similar things. We've got a group of people that, um, like AA, we all get well, together. It's, it's really yeah, funny. Kind I mean, of, yes. We have a group of people that, and you know, we, we don't, we come from different places. Yeah. Sure. There are different beliefs in the group. That's okay. We get everybody together that, that these people have not lost their minds. They're <laughs> solid people. And that is a great place or to start Or have gone from. through a shared experience, and even I, like yeah, you and I, where it's yeah. like there's just a compassion there. There's like, yeah. feel like we're war buddies yeah. mm -hmm. because we've gone through Oh, wait, you're in the experience. trench next right, to me. Totally. I'm taking it. heavy fire. Yeah, yeah. I like you. And, <laughs> and that's it. And, and I think that it's really important that we take care of, of people that are in similar categories or have been canceled or have been, yeah. you know, and, and, and so for us, we're trying to, you know, prepare a table for yeah. some of those people. And, um, but to me, I, I didn't see that like a, a year no. ago. That was not even in our in our you know looking forward. We just couldn't see any of that, and so I think that that's kind of where we're at right now, where we're heading, and trying to just you know take care of the people around us. And yeah, creatively, artistically, when again before I was a part of a system where I was waiting for someone to give me a job, and I'm still not welcome in that world. The Broadway community is still has mandates implemented, and so many people like me have been excluded now. So. Yeah what are we supposed to do? I feel like we're in a season of, cre of creating, of, of creating our own work and being called to be spark plugs to both employ ourselves and create and start new systems yeah. where all are welcome and all can... Real uh, inclusion. Wow. Yes, yeah. can actually come create thought? with us if you've been excluded <laughs> yep. from this system over here. Yeah. Um, so that's been exciting. And again, new, el new forms of creativity, songwriting, uh, maybe I'll pick up an instrument. I don't know. Soon we're we're creating pitch decks and one pagers for film ideas yeah, and yeah, TV totally. ideas that we can in with people in arenas that are going to be welcoming and supportive yeah. of us. And so that's really exciting. I feel like and Nashville too is great. yes. I think that is it's a very exciting yes. place to be right and now. And it's cool. Like we're all landing here like the grapes right. of wrath. Right. There are all these creative people with all this talent. Yes. Like what is happening? Yeah. John that's Bevere. Exactly we, we were listening last night. John Bevere had um had a, he was talking, I think, at uh, Belonging Co. And he's like, he's like, raise your hand if, if you just, if you've recently moved here. Half and, the <laughs> and, and you just felt called, like, and he's, yeah, a bunch of people raise their hand. He's, right, keep your, keep your hand raised if you have, you really don't know why, though. <laughs> and like most and, of the people still raise yeah, their hand. <laughs> and it's, and it is, you know, for us, it's, that, that for us, it was not just being pushed out of New York. It felt like we were being called here. Like, truly, like, I felt like this, this, it was, there's no other way to say it. There was this supernatural thing that happened yeah. where we were like, Frank, I couldn't even put Franklin on a map. I got to tell you, or just to add on you to know. you. So in my case, I, I say to Breezy all the time, my wife, mm -hmm. I'm like, it feels like God put a boot on the back or a foot on the back of my leg just shoved me off a train at 100 miles an hour. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You're not getting off the train. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna do it for you. Yeah. You know what I mean? You're not gonna like the landing. It's gonna be a little. Just trust me. Yeah. Uh, That's but it. I have a plan to get you somewhere else, and I 100% agree with you. Yeah. I, I am on a hill, down in Thompson Station. Yeah. Probably shouldn't be telling people where I live. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Try to find it. Um, it's not easy. Um, yeah. But, but I never thought I'd be on that hill. I never, I never even thought about Tennessee. Mm -hmm. Right. Not that I had anything against it. I heard of Nashville. Heard of country exactly. music. But it's like. And to your point, I know I, I'm going to go into the biblical thing a lot, but I just want to. Yep. He leads us as captives in, in his triumphal procession. Yeah. That's something I've been studying at church lately. I never understood that. You're a captive. I chose you, and you're going to watch. You're going to march in my triumphal procession, spreading the aroma of the knowledge of God everywhere you go. Uh, that is, right. I've tapped you for that. And <laughs> yeah. since you weren't going to do it, <laughs> 100%. I'm just going to do the other part of it because you don't really have a choice at some point. I've right. tapped you for a mission. And it's like, mm -hmm. and you, you have to, you start to realize that is what's happening because you had no intention right. of being here. I had no intention no. of being here. Do you know what I mean? And I think so many other Christians would tell you that, that like, I don't know how I ended up here. Right. Mm -hmm. And it's actually kind of cool when you begin to get that perspective and you're like, oh, I, I've been chosen. And doing that and having an influence comes with adversity. 
and like the the more influence you have and the more platform and the more you're being called to go against the grain of culture like you're going to face it more but now we're kind of a little more like bring it on <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> like now we're we've been like this a little bit <laughs> like <laughs> it's just it's it's shifting your perspective yeah. to go what an honor and a responsibility to <laughs> To have been chosen, whatever, it, and it's painful yeah. and hard. But too, it's not but called the chosen that show for nothing, and it's like it's a concept in Christianity that is such a it's one of those weird doctrinal things. Yeah. But like, because we like to think, um, and there's arrogance in this that I'm smart enough to choose the right path, uh, and actually the doctrine is good. no, I chose you, right. and that can come off even sounding arrogant. Oh, you've been chosen, but that's the doctrine. That's what Jesus says. He walks up to people and goes, "Follow me." Follow me. And they just stand up. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. like, that is, it's just a weird thing. But I believe it. When I hear your guys' story and I think about what happened and how unfair it was. And that's just one thing I would just say to you again and, and Nathan. It's like, what was done to you was wrong. Thank you. And uh, I, I just, you, you are great people. And, and I just love watching the way that you're acting and all this and the way you're handling it and the grace with which you're handling it yeah. it's it's super super admirable um so the trial produces in you it perfects you it makes you something new and one of the things it's done is you created an album and you have a part two is that correct yes so, so the goal was to yes have five tracks it's an ep of part one that was released last october and the goal now is to have a second part, another f at least five tracks yeah. in the late spring, early summer is the tentative goal right now. And so how, how serious? I mean, obviously you have a great voice. You're obviously super talented, but like how serious is this whole the music thing, like in terms of making albums? And sure. I think music and songwriting will now be a regular facet of my life but I still feel called to pursue other forms of mm -hmm. acting, whether it's TV film or teaching or coaching, mentoring, speaking at things. I don't know, I don't know yet. Maybe I'm supposed to write a book. I'm now in this season going, God, what other, what other ways do you, are you calling me to be creative that are not just musical theater, which is all I ever saw myself doing. Yeah. And so I'm really open. I hold everything really loosely now and I'm just <laughs> waiting yeah. for direction. And I think songwriting has been an amazing, I did put all my eggs in that basket this last year because it was very healing and it felt like one way I could mm -hmm. have a voice and yeah. find my roar and share my story. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I plan to continue doing it, but I'm not, to be honest, I'm not at this moment like, I need to become the next Taylor Swift. I want to go on tour for years. We'll see. We'll see what happens. We'll see what God's plans are. I'm not close to it, but um, I think that's going to be one, one lane and one facet of creativity that I continue to explore moving forward. Yeah. And that's another thing. I just, again, I'm going to keep going here. The, the, the show is very clearly the big picture centered with a, with a spiritual Christian point of view on the world. Um, so it's, it's just something I'm going to bring up a lot, but like, that's one of the things about Christianity, I think, too, that is a misunderstood thing, which is, and even misunderstood for Christians a lot of times, like, it's this idea that I'm going to put a yoke on your life of some kind of thing that's going to saddle you with a bunch of requirements mm. of go to church on Sunday, um, you know, pray, you know, whatever, these, these, feeling, these things that you have to do, it's going to kind of step on your Broadway career, it's going to step on your ad, because, you know, and what you just described, and I see it in your faces, and I'm not saying you're not grieving still about what happened or you're, but it's actually an adventure. It's actually the sure. most exciting sure. adventure. Like yep. it's actually where he wants you, which is yeah. you're going to get your instructions today, today, and tomorrow yeah. I'll give you the that's next right. ones. That's exactly. right. Exactly. Every step illuminates as you go. That is exactly where we are. And, that, and that's fun though. It's like, <laughs> then you think about how Jesus rolled, but what did he do? I, I, the son of man has nowhere to lay his head. Yeah. Right. I right. don't know where I'm rolling my head. Is that, you want to follow me? Because I don't know where I'm sleeping tonight. Totally. Right. Absolutely. But right. it's okay. He's taken care of us literally every day up to this point. So I think it's, it is an adventure. <laughs> I think it took a second to, to, to be able to put those words around it. For sure. Um, and I probably said it a little faster than you did. Um, <laughs> but I think it's, you know, being right in the center of his plans for your life. That's the most exciting place. It's really, truly the only yes. place you want to be is just yes. like, where do you want me today? You know what I mean? I, yeah. we've, we've talked about that a lot of just trying to be people that are, that are in the, living in the moment, living in the present, just connected to him, find, finding where he's leading. And um, I think that that's where we're at now. I'll tell you what, it's, it's, it's daily. You know what I mean? Yep. So. Yeah, and you said earlier too that um, we need, those voices need to be out there. And then you think about what Jesus said. He goes, well, you need to be salt and light. Yeah. Well, were, were we before? 
I think we were blending in. Uh, and why salt? Because we preserve the culture. Why, why light? Because we bring the light of truth into situations. Right. You've been released to do that now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. And blending in in the lukewarmity of it all. Mm -hmm. And I, I often think that. I'm like, did I even have an influence? Like, was I even impactful for those 15 years if this is what happened? And then... I mean, that's a whole nother conversation. And you realize, no, like God used me there and he had me there mm -hmm. for a season. Mm -hmm. And there was grace on that mm -hmm. and favor mm -hmm. on that. But now he's like calling me to something else. And it might look different and it might, yeah. and you've learned some things along the way. And so have I. And, and we are free we from are, having right? to fit in now, <laughs> which is cool. It's, good it's, to learn it's that. kind of beautiful. Yeah. And you just said that. it'll look different. It's like, oh, oh, it will definitely look different. Yep. Like I've, I, what I've learned through all this is He's the grand script writer. Yeah. He always was. He was always writing the script. You right. just didn't know it and right. you didn't admit totally. it. And, right. and now you are fully aware that, oh, you're writing the script. My job is to submit to the instructions. Yeah. And then, well, if we look at him, what was he doing? I only say what the father says. I only do what the father says. I'm walking through life just waiting for instructions. That's it. I just, moment to moment, tell me what you want me to do. Yeah. And I'll do it. Yeah. I will do, I will obey. Yeah. And that is the only thing we're called to do. That's it. great. That's great. But it's actually so... But again, so exciting and, and surprisingly so. And I look at you too and going like, look, you have a, you have a podcast platform show now. And <laughs> not a like, small one. <laughs> they're, it, it's That's very big. We'll this see if it gets big. Did you ever see yourself doing that? Would you have ever done this? Had that not, how did this horrible thing not happen to you? No, I literally, this whole thing is a, is a chessboard I don't control. Yeah. This was never in my mind. I was never sitting here. I'm not sitting here with you two right, right now. Right. Any script that I wrote. Yeah. This is something... I was never writing a song. You were never writing a song. Yeah, it's just... And in a, and in a way, that's why I say I'm just going back to it again. It's the most exciting thing yeah. possible. Yeah. It's the most frightening thing possible. Yes, it is frightening. <laughs> it's frightening. Yeah, yeah you and feel that's, that too. And that's the message for people today is get canceled. Come courage. on the journey. <laughs> yes, right. but have no, courage but, but have to courage. face it. You know, yeah. it is, you know what I mean? Because I'm going off your album title. On the other side, I sense in you guys like ex excitement in life. I'm not saying you don't have your dark days. But I'm saying what I'm seeing right now, and I don't think you're just putting a game face on. I'm seeing a, like an excitement for yep. what's next. What are you going to do next? Oh, yeah. Yes. Like, yes. <laughs> I'm excited to see yep. what you're the, going to do. I, the word I got for this year was celebrate. And my just, you know, new year, new things, just kind of praying and thinking about the year ahead. And I was very shocked to get that word because it has not been a previous year and a half of celebration, really, you know? <laughs> There's been and, no celebration right. in America for right. about four years. <laughs> right, exactly, for dirge. a while. And so I was just, that's the attitude. That's the word I have for the year. So I'm like, all right, God, can't wait. Can't wait to start to celebrate. I don't know what it is, what it's going to be yet, but I'm excited to celebrate this year for whatever it's he I love has. it. I love it. Any final words that you would say? I mean, I think you've said a lot, but Laura and, and Nathan, like, and maybe you've said it already, but just any final things you would say if we agree that this, whatever you want to call it, wokeness, totalitarianism, my way or the highway, whatever, whatever you want to call this, if it is coming for everybody, what, what would your final encouragement be to people? Because yeah. if it's coming to their front door. Yeah. I think, I think don't fear it. I think, I think at the end of the day, it's like, you know, drink a cup of courage, you know, look, get some role models in your life that you can see somebody that's doing it well and hit it head on. And I, I think, you know, it's interesting because, you know, sometimes people think cancel culture. It's like, well, it's doing something wrong and then you're, you're, that's, that's like you get canceled or that's like a, you know, that's a, uh, that's a consequence. It's like, no, no, no. Cancel culture right. is different than making bad decisions and having consequences. This is, the, the stuff that we're saying is like stand up for what's right and if cancel culture comes from you, stare that thing in the face and take it as it comes. Surround yourself with good people, you know. They do and, exist. And they do exist and, and hang in there, you know what I mean? And then, and I, I think that that's, that would be my message to people. I think that's really good. I would, I would echo what you yeah. say and I like what you said about truth, about standing for the yeah. truth, knowing and trying and seeking truth. Yeah. And I think people are very affected right now by feelings and fear and the things that people are getting fed, they're following along with, and no one wants to stand out from the crowd. And there's a lot of, <laughs> I hate to use the term, but misinformation. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, what is... Everything they say is projection, by the way. Everything. That's Sorry. It. I, yes. <laughs> so uh, it's, 
It's just been in a season of actually seeking after what is true and standing on and that. standing in that. Yep. Love it. Yep. How can people follow what you're up to? Because so where, where should they go? I am on the social media. Even you're on that social media thing. <laughs> you know, I had to step away for yeah. a little while because yeah. it was a pretty talks, hateful place. Come back it again. Was, yeah, yeah. It's crazy out there. Um, it's my at my name Laura Osnes O S N E S, and then I do have a website where you can find my music and upcoming concerts or, or various things, and it's lauraosnes.com. Very awesome, busy. Nathan. For you, any Nathan Johnson? It's actually Nathan Johnson N Y. Uh, Still got it on there. You got to get that NY. Uh, on. Yeah, I know. I mean, <laughs> I, I, rebrand. <laughs> thought we were going to live and die there, but yeah. um, you know. Uh, and then also, my website's NathanJohnson.co. So, check man, it, it has been so awesome to have you guys. What Thank a you pleasure. So much for Thank coming you for on. Thank us. you, Brett. Thank really, you, everybody, really for having it. us. Cool. Thank you. Thanks for joining the big picture. I hope you enjoyed this episode. You made it to the end, so just hit the subscribe button or the like button. I don't care which. Actually, I'd like you to subscribe, and follow me on Twitter. Follow me on LinkedIn. Uh, you'll see that I'm constantly posting things, usually getting the conversation going, which I would love if you joined it. So please join in to the conversation and follow. Thanks for joining me today.